2020 wasn't the best year for us all, let's be honest, and these movies just about sum that year up. Let's get into it. What is up everyone, Movie Way, I'm back again with another video, and today's going to be my top 5 worst movies of 2020. Now I have done a top 10 best of 2020, and this is only half of them films being 5, but I didn't hate too many films this year. You know, I tried to find enjoyment in almost everything that I watched, plus the amount of releases just weren't as much as the previous years was there due to the pandemic and stuff. So I've just narrowed it down to five here, because there is some bad ones that I want to talk about, and I don't want to be too negative by doing ten as well, but who knows, maybe next year there'll be ten bad ones that I can talk about. But I'm just going to keep it to five here, so let's get into it with number five. Number five is going to be Artemis Fowl, the Disney Plus original that was meant to be released at cinemas because it had such a big budget, and oh my god, where did that budget go? It was a total mess of a film. Josh Gad narrating this was terrible. There's some people who should be narrating, like Morgan Freeman and David Attenborough. Josh Gad is not one of them people. He was just so annoying. The young boy in this was terrible. Just a very unlikable character who plays Artemis Fowl. Judy Dench, I don't know what she was doing with her voice, but it was... She was trying to put this voice on, <laughs> it just didn't work. It sounded like she couldn't talk properly. <sighs> the costume design was bad. <laughs> it all took place in this house, like 90% of the film, and it just didn't work for me, the location. There were some things that I didn't mind too much about it. I mean, I think people hated this movie way more than I did. But overall, it wasn't a good film, and yeah, just a waste of a budget, really. I'm sure this had like 100 million. <laughs> <laughs> Don't quote me on that, but I'm sure that's what I said. So yeah, number five, Artemis Fowl, not great. Number four is going to be Brahms, The Boy 2. <sighs> this is the total genetic horror film that we are used to, and just a moneymaker really. The first Brahms film made 10, cost 10 million to make, and I think it made like 50. So they've seen an opportunity here to make it for the same budget and get their money back again. And quadruple their money if you like <laughs> i remember the cinema being quite packed for this one so yeah it probably did and this is just like i said a cash grab it's full of cheap jump scares that happen all the time and you just see them coming the story is not as good as the first movie the first movie wasn't great but it was okay i found good things about it this yeah it doesn't make sense like the story is Defeats all the rules of the first movie and just does its own thing, really. Katie Holmes is okay, I suppose, but yeah, overall, just a pretty bland horror movie. It's like 80 minutes long, no care gone into it. <laughs> just, just a bad movie, really. So, number four is Brahms the Boy 2. Number three is going to be Greyhound. Now, sometimes boring films are worse than bad movies. In fact, most of the time they are, and Greyhound was probably the most boring film I've seen all year. I mean, what the hell was this? It was just Tom Hanks on a boat, and he does one battle, has a rest, does another battle, has a rest, does another battle. Movie over. <laughs> it's so dull, it's so grey and depressing. <sighs> characters just didn't care about them whatsoever they were just there to be there as filler tom hanks was okay in this i suppose he's probably the best thing about the movie but it just wasn't a good film at all and there's all these flashbacks of tom hanks's life you know where he gets these slippers off his wife and stuff and it just doesn't make any sense it doesn't incorporate itself into the story whatsoever I think them flashbacks were just made to bring the runtime up a little bit because this is only 90 minutes long. <laughs> Without them flashbacks, it would have been 80, and they just probably thought they couldn't put an 80 minute movie out there because this was intended for cinemas. But I will probably never watch this movie again, <laughs> in all honesty. <laughs> yeah. Number three, Greyhound. Don't recommend it whatsoever. Number two is going to be Bloodshot. <sighs> Wow, <laughs> this is the worst I've felt at the cinema all year. 
first 30 minutes of this movie, actually, I was kind of like, this isn't bad, actually. I've heard some bad things about it, but I was quite enjoying the first 30 minutes, and then it just jumps off a cliff with an anchor tied to it. <laughs> it was just so bad. <laughs> it just was a total mess. It didn't quite know what it wanted to do. <sighs> it was just so bad, honestly. Vin Diesel isn't great in this at all. <sighs> I struggle to find anything good to say about this movie apart from the first 30 minutes. Characters we just don't care about. Action scenes that were just looked very, very bad. A generic film. And one that was very, very forgettable. I'm struggling to find now memories of this movie, even though I only watched it this year, because it was just so bad. <laughs> I don't, hope I never have to see it again. It was just so dull. Honestly, one of the worst superhero movies, if it even is that, that I've seen, if not the worst. It was just a total mess of a film. Guy Pierce as well, was just... Bad villain. <laughs> it was just so bad, honestly. Just one movie pipped it to number one, but this, pretty terrible. Number two is Bloodshot. <laughs> Number one is going to be Project Power, the Netflix original, and I had high hopes for this really because Jamie Foxx is a good actor, love him in Baby Driver and stuff, so I had, you know, when I heard the story for this, I had high hopes, I thought it was really, really interesting, a drug that lets you do whatever you want for five minutes, kind of like the movie Limitless, and I thought this could be good, and lo and behold, it was one of the worst movies I've ever seen. <laughs> It was so, so bad. The story just didn't play out well at all. The CGI was terrible. Jamie Foxx just didn't look like he wanted to be there. <laughs> it was just a mess of a movie. Didn't make sense. I just hated every second of it. I really did. I think I give it half a star on Letterboxd. Just so bad. <laughs> I didn't review this film. Because, I'll be honest, I fell asleep for the last 10 minutes. So I didn't think I was being fair to it, to review that. But later on in the year, I did go back and watch them last 10 minutes. So I could give my full thoughts here. And it, it didn't bring anything. It was just such a bad film, honestly. It, you don't need to see this, trust me. Number one, it's Project Power. Okay guys, there are my top five worst films of the year. I know this is a very short video, but I just couldn't put 10 in there because there'd be some movies that I did enjoy. So, yeah, just a quick video. Top five worst movies of the year. Look out for the top five most surprising and top five most disappointing. And check out the top ten best. Thanks very much, guys. If you want to comment about any of these films, leave it down below, and I'll reply to every single one of you, I promise. Take it all easy, guys. See you all in the next video.